something you've been putting off. Maybe you say, someday I'll do that, or when I have more time. Whether the item is a big bucket list item or something smaller like going on a hike, now is the time to start your Say Yes list. And we have the perfect process to help you turn these items into reality. Join thousands of others with our free Say Yes list template at thesayyesexperience.com forward slash list. It'll help you stop living in that someday and start making those list items come true today. So download it now at thesayyesexperience.com forward slash list. Welcome to the Say Yes Experience podcast, where we inspire you to get out of your comfort zone and into possibility. Our mission at the Say Yes Experience is to empower 10 million people to say yes. If you're new here, welcome. We're thrilled you're here. I'm Jessica Rector. I co-founded the Say Yes Experience with my then nine-year-old son, Blaze, based off his idea to let's just say yes to things. I'm one of the top experts on burnout, and companies and conferences hire me to present on mental health, wellness, and burnout prevention. As the number one best-selling author of 11 books, keynote speaker, and a burnout specialist, I've seen so much with our clients. The Say Yes experience was started to help you really start living, to do the things that light you up, have more fun, and turn your dreams of what we call Say Yes list items into reality. So thank you for investing in yourself and being here. Now let's make it happen. Being a troubled kid, Tyler Canning wasn't sure where he was headed in life. Then someone came along and changed everything. Because one person believed in him, Tyler was able to do something most people only dream about and very, very few people actually achieve. He said yes to overcoming the odds and making the impossible probable. He takes us on his journey of ups and downs and gives you the process of what it truly takes to fulfill your dreams. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome my guest today, Tyler Canning. Welcome, Tyler. We're so happy you're here. So you are a professional boxer. Tell us a little bit how that got started and how you got down the road or on the road of professional boxing. So, uh, you know, I was a troubled kid and I liked to fight and, uh, you know, so it just kind of <laughs> fell into my, my lap. <laughs> so... Did you box a lot when you were younger? I mean, even though maybe you fought a lot as like, a child, you know, because you were a troubled kid, doesn't necessarily mean that that would lead you down the path of really becoming a professional boxer. Because there's a lot of training and and mindset things that got that go into becoming a professional boxer. Yeah, I had like 90 amateur fights as a and a, as a kid. I I well I. I was amateur up till I was uh, 20, and then I turned pro at 20, so. So, did you, was this something that you always knew that you wanted to be a boxer? How did you kind of get down that path? Yeah, I've always, uh, I always wanted to, you know, I always, like, you know, my, that was kind of what me and my dad did when I was younger. We'd watch the fights and stuff like that, and I just, it's always something I wanted to do. Right. So how was that training in order for you to become a professional boxer? How did you have to train? What did that look like? Even though there's a lot of times that we may want to do something, but then when we get into the midst of it, it doesn't look like what we envisioned in our heads for it to be. So once you started training and doing the work into becoming a boxer, how did that line up to what you thought it would be? It's definitely a lot harder than I, I thought. A lot more discipline. I went from, you know, not, I mean, I like skateboarding as a kid, but I did. It wasn't really a lot of, I mean, it's, it was a little bit, but I, you know, I went from that to like running five miles a day to, you know, spending hours in the gym. I mean, every day I was in the gym. So, so how did you get the mindset to really do that? Because I think professional boxing, it's a league of their own, right? Because you're taking punches, you're get you're getting hit literally continuously over and over. So even if you knew that maybe you wanted to do that because you were a trouble kid and you got in fights, getting back and pounded over and over it takes a toll on you. So once you got into that, even as an amateur, what kept motivating you to keep going and to keep saying, "Okay, this is what I want to do, and I want to turn pro." Uh, my mentor and my coach really pushed me, you know what I mean? You know, it was kind of, it was my way out. It was my way out of, uh, 
you know, my life that I had. And it really gave me a, an opportunity that, you know, I didn't have in like school sports and stuff like that. So it really just gave me an opportunity. So it just pushed me to get out of my hometown. And so what do you mean it pushed you to get out and get out of the household that you grew up in? What was going on there? So, you know, I, I grew up, it was, I wasn't the best, you know, I single mom. My dad was there for a little bit, but he was uh, very abusive to me and my mother. And I, I was, I seen a lot of that as a kid and, uh, you know, just, you know, my mom, she did the best she could. She just didn't, you know, she did the best she could. She didn't understand. She, you know, she wasn't loved as much as a kid, like. When I knew my grandma, so like she, she just kind of did it what it was. So it was just, I was kind of on the back burner. Mm -hmm. uh, and my, my grandma pretty much raised me. And, uh, you know, I didn't, you know, I kind of grew, you know, my dad was kind of the bad kid and got in trouble. And I like, watched him go to jail and stuff when I was a kid. And so I grew up thinking like, you know, that's kind of how my, my life was going to be. I was just going to be the troubled kid and. I grew up in a very small town of only 5,000 people. And, uh, mm -hmm. once you get in trouble, once you get in trouble once you're basically just, you know, the, you're like the trouble kid, you know what I mean? So like you just kind of mm -hmm. get in name for yourself. So. And did you feel like that you had to live up to that name once you got in trouble the first time where you're like, okay, well I'm late for the trouble kid. So won't be that big of a deal if I get in trouble again. Yeah, you know, and it was kind of my way of getting back at my my mom and stuff. You know, I I didn't really I didn't I didn't realize it as I was a kid. I realize it now, but you know, it's kind of my way to get back at my mom and my dad. I was just like, oh, I'm just gonna do whatever I want, you know. And like I said, I see my dad doing stuff like that all the time. So I I thought that was like cool. I thought that was like, oh, I'm a man. I'm getting in trouble, and I just I kind of was, you know, my dad was my role model. So it was just. Yeah. It's so interesting when we look at, you know, perspective of us as an adult is different than when we're kids in that situation. We can look back and say, okay, well, this is why I did it. But in those moments as kids, maybe we ourselves felt unloved or we wanted attention or there was someone in our lives that we saw doing that exact same thing. So not even that we maybe thought that it was cool to do that, but maybe we thought that's what we're supposed to do. That's what, that's what guys do. You know, I mean, my dad does it or, you know, this other guy that my parents are friends with, he does it. So why not, why not I do it? And then we take that on without even realizing at the time that there's anything wrong with that, that there's a better way or a different way to do things. And we take that on. And then that becomes that, that a life that, so it keeps growing around and around. And it also becomes a story that we tell ourselves like, okay, so great. Now I'm the trouble kid. So if I get in trouble, guess what? People are just going to expect it out of me because I've already been labeled the trouble kid. Yeah. Did you find that to be the case when you were growing up? Yeah, definitely. You know, I, you know, I just was kind of expected to be the trouble kid. I was going down that path and I didn't really care what people thought of me. And I thought, you know, I'm going to be the tough guy and mm -hmm. be just like, nobody's going to mess with me kind of person, you know, cause that's how my dad was. He was really, you know, no, he, like nobody could look at it wrong or anything. Like he was a fight. Like he would, no matter what, like in cars, like we were driving, he went to jail for fighting somebody with me in the front seat. <laughs> So just like, yeah, just no matter, no matter what, like it, he just was like, I'm like the tough guy. Nobody like held high, like nobody's going to mess with me. And I, that's what I grew up being and thinking and thinking that's what a man was. So. So when you were growing up and you were around that, how did that impact you uh, as a kid? Like your self-esteem, your self-awareness, how you were. I mean, we know how you were showing up, you were getting in trouble, but how did that impact like what was going on inside of you? You know, it really, uh, it affected me a lot and a lot of things, you know, it made me really not believe in myself. It really affected just the way I, you know, because I never wanted to be that person. I just kind of, mm -hmm. that's the way I was going down, so, you know, being that person. Uh, and it still affects me to this day. Sometimes I still kind of can be that way. And it's, it's hard, it's a hard uh, habit to break. And it's just, you know, what, like Tyler, you can be what way, like the troublemaker. 
not a troublemaker anymore. I don't do that, but I can still, you know, sometimes I'll be like, yo, I'm, I'm the too tough guy. I just, I don't know if it's being a boxer or what, but I can still be that way sometimes. So. But it is, it is a hard habit to break. So when you're growing up that way, you're seeing that when your dad as your role model, how do you go from that to, I want to be boxer. I want to do that. Even though that you're amateur, you could have been that person who spends his whole life in jail, but something had to change. Something had to tweak some reiteration or something aha moment that you came to that you're like, okay. That's not who I want to be anymore. That's not the life I want to lead anymore. So what was that turning point for you? So my co- I had a coach come into my life and he was like a father figure to me. And he truly, uh, you know, he uh, he just was there for me. Uh, and I remember uh, I had been in jail and sent away. I've been in a lot of different places. You know, you know, my mom and dad just like they sent me there. You know, my dad, he'd talk to me sometimes. But like, I never really had anybody to like, you know, be there for me. And I remember the last time I had got sent away after I met my coach, um, and I, I was spending my, I spent my 16th birthday locked up mm-hmm. and I just remember every, he would call me every single day and he just talked to me. Um, mm-hmm. and I was just something that really, I think, you know, being, having him there for me really changed my perspective on life. And he really showed me and, you know, just that. You know, I, I'm more than just a troubled kid and I can get out of this. And, and, uh, he really, uh, that was, uh, that was the turning point for me and just being there for me. So, so is this your boxing coach? Yes. So were you boxing at that time when he was doing this? Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I had been boxing for a long time, but I, I just never really took it serious until I got out the last time I got in trouble it was the last time I really took it serious so. so I so Tyler I love that because at 16 someone spends the time to have a conversation with you to put forth time and effort and energy in you to basically say hey Tyler you matter you're important that person who you've been or the person that you're showing the world that you are really isn't you and he believed in you. Maybe when you didn't believe in yourself, when you didn't have other adults showing you that they believed in you. And because he put that time and that energy, having the conversations with you, showing that, hey, you're you're worthy. You are worth it. Like you mattered to this world. That changed everything for you. I was getting teary-eyed when you were when you were talking about that because I think as I can just imagine as a 16-year-old boy growing up in an environment like that and really, and I, I, this is how I'm thinking. I'm not saying you're saying this, but I'm just saying like in that kind of environment, you might have felt unloved, unwanted, and underappreciated, undervalued. And then here somebody is who has no blood ties to you at all, like no responsibility to you at all, but shows you how important you are not just to him, but to the world in that you can be different than what you've been up until this point. Yeah, definitely. You know, he really, uh, he sh- he just, you know, and yeah, he didn't have to be there for me. He, you know, he could have been just like everybody else, but he, you know, he spent the time with me and, you know, really, really gave me that, that belief in myself. You know, because I, I mean, I, from Wyoming, there's not very many people that have, ki- like, I don't even know if really... There's been a couple of pro fighters, but I mean, it's not like from where I'm from, nobody <laughs> came from there besides me. So like, it just, you know, you know, I, you know, I grew up just doing it kind of as a hobby at first, you know, I always wanted to do it, but it was, it was just a hobby. Cause I'm like, well, I'm in Wyoming. I don't have opportunities like other people. So. So what was it that he said that really led you to that moment of you starting to believe in yourself or you starting to believe that you could do something with it with boxing as more than just a hobby you know he shared his life with me a little bit and and, and uh it just uh and he told me like you know you could he, he, he just showed me like hey man you got talent you know you got more talent than other people in the gym like you know, you're going down the wrong path now. 
and it's either time to you know step up and and uh you know step up your faith and and go for it or or not you know and so you know i made the decision uh while i was locked away i said i was gonna change my life and then i did so so did you do that once you i learned that you're like i was locked up and i decided i was going to change my life like right there you're locked up and you're like yep i'm changing my life and so once you got out how did that look how did you change your life how did you start doing that because it may have been easier to say that once you're inside but once you get outside and all the same stuff that was there before you went in, right? All of the same things, all of the same temptations were there. You could have easily reverted back to what you were before. So what? how did that look once you actually got out? How did you really decide to change your life? Do you want to start saying yes, but you just don't know where to start? And oftentimes when we don't know where to start, we just don't start. So we created an ebook just for you. We put together 101 ways to say yes in this ebook. Ideas, big and small, things that only take a small amount of time, like one to two minutes. Whether you're saying yes to yourself, in your family, relationships, or pushing yourself lovingly outside of your comfort zone with adventures, it's all made to really help you become more of your rock star self. So you can get this ebook at thesayyesexperience.com forward slash book, B-O-O-K. So if you want to start saying yes, or maybe you need some ideas on how to say yes, because you get so caught up in being busy and doing tasks and projects or doing laundry and cooking that the time flies by and you want to spend time with your family, but you just don't know how to say yes. Those ideas just don't come to you. We put it together to make it super, super easy for you. So go to thesayyesexperience.com forward slash book to get your copy today and start saying yes now. Are you feeling overwhelmed, stressed, or burned out? We get it. You're not alone. In fact, according to our research, 79% of the workforce is in burnout and almost half are in extreme burnout. In fact, it's the number one reason why people are leaving organizations. They're burned out. They're looking for something more. They're looking for something better, but it doesn't have to be that way. We have your solution. It's called Blaze Your Brain to Extinguish Burnout. 52 Keys to Prevent, Breakthrough, and Eliminate Burnout. You can find your copy at justcorrector.com forward slash store. Now, this is a great tool that you can use with yourself, with your colleagues, within your organization. Everyone can get one and you can go through one a week with them. And at the end, you can say, what was something that worked this week? What was the success you had? So you can champion and encourage each other. You can also ask what were the challenges and issues that came up? So you can mastermind and brainstorm around those to keep those from coming up in the future. So make sure you get your copy at justcorrector.com forward slash store. All books are autographed with a personal message just for you. You know, I just really, um, you know, I had to cut ties with, I mean, I'm still friend. I'd still be friendly and friends with you. Well, I had to cut ties with a lot of my, my friends, um, you know, just people going down the wrong path. Um, and I basically had to focus like, I mean, like I would literally, I'd get out of school and I'd go straight to the gym and I'd be there till six, seven, eight o'clock at night. I, um, you know, I just had to completely dedicate myself to, to my sport and, and go after it. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm not saying I wasn't perfect. I still sometimes made bad decisions and stuff, but I, I didn't, I was able to, you know, just really, uh, when I had my. I guess like I had that tunnel vision, like nothing was gonna, nothing was gonna get in my way. So, yeah, focus and discipline, because you had to also be disciplined. There could have been yeah. temptations and easy and things that were easily distracting, but you had to be, you had to be disciplined and start yeah. really down that path of believing in yourself, because it's completely different, Tyler. Someone saying, Tyler, you have skills, you're better than some people, and you go, okay, okay. And then it could have, you could have not 
done anything with it. You could have chosen to just say, okay, coach, I gotcha, but not really been focused or disciplined because that's really what it took. You putting in the work and the effort over and over and over to do it and say, okay, it's it was a hobby, but now I'm going full force in it. So that mind shift also happened where you then started to believe in yourself. Do you remember an instance or a situation or how that started to happen for you? Was it more training? Was it you got up and, you know, you started fighting, you know, different people and you won? What what kind of shifted in you? So we had, we had a guy that was going to our gym and he was really good. He was like a national champion and stuff. And, and uh, I remember getting out. And uh, I had lost, I had to lose a bunch of weight because I got fat when I was locked up. So I was able to really work out. So I got fat and I had to lose weight. And I remember losing weight and then him coming to the gym. And I just remember getting the best of him that day. And uh, that truly, it showed me like, hey, like, you know, like somebody that I looked up to. Yeah. And I knew that it was going to pay off. And then that same, that same year, I ended up fighting a guy who was ranked uh, number thir- three in the nation. And I just remember being scared and uh, just being like, oh man, here goes my my dreams. I ended up beating him to go on to the nationals. That's so, God. Wow, congratulations. That is super cool. That's very cool. Oh my gosh. So you beat him and then you went to the nationals and what happened there? Well, no, I won nationals that year, so... <laughs> no. that feel I mean, what gets you like from where you were at 16 to that point how long what kind of timeline it passed when you were in jail at 16 to that point i think it, it was like four or five months i came out in the street wait so from you were in jail and then four or five months later yeah you were at nationals and you won nationals no yeah. you're Such a quick time. You're gonna say like four or five years later, like four or five months later. Man, it's a nightmare discipline. Oh my gosh! And then you won nationals. It's a very short period of time. We just got up watching. That's big time. That is a short period of time to go from trouble kid to national champ. So where did that feel? It's all great, you know, and it truly. uh... It just showed me that I that I could do this and that I could make it happen if I just made, put the work in. Because, I mean, with anything in life, it takes hard work. And especially, you know, just doing anything in life, it takes hard work. And it, it showed me that my discipline, if I was disciplined, that I could make it happen. So That's such a short period of time. That is awesome. So amazing. So what's happened since Nationals? Oh, my gosh. I can't believe that. That's so cool. That's very cool. So I, uh, as I, then I, I tried out for the Olympics and uh, I can't, I think 2012, I think it was, but yeah, so I think it's done, but yeah, I tried out and I lost in the semifinals to the guy who went, but, uh, I mean, I was, I was okay with it. Cause I was kind of ready to, I'm like, if I'm going to take punishment to my, my brain anymore, I think it's time to make some money out of it. So I was okay with it. I turned pro and, uh, basically I, from, uh, Turn pro, and then I in 2013 I fought on HBO. And then time. So you did all of that. Then you turned pro. You fought on HBO. And this sounds like a movie. This sounds like a movie, like Trouble Kid, to you know, pro boxer on HBO. That sounds like that sounds like a movie in the works. Yeah, I mean, but that is so big. It all started with having those conversations with your coaches. So what made you decide to go pro and, and how was pro versus amateur? Like, how were, how were you feeling about going pro once you went pro? You know, I was ready to turn pro. I, I would have turned pro sooner, but uh, I had, uh, you know, I wanted to try out for the Olympics because I felt like, you know, if you make it to the Olympics, I mean, you're you're going to, have a lot better chance when you turn pro, like you're going to get yeah. signed with big, something like that, you know? So, so I knew that that was a good, you know, track to go down. Plus, I mean, being a Olympic boxer is a big thing. So, you know, I, I tried for it. I wasn't successful. I could have quit, but I told myself, no, it's, 
we'll just turn pro and do it the harder way. And I wouldn't take it back for anything. So, and so tell us a little bit about your prank journey so far. So I fought when I fought on HBL, I beat the guy who went to the Olympics for Italy, uh, for the, his country. And then I, uh, I fought, I fought quite a bit. Uh, I fought, I, you know, in the recent years, a couple, like four years ago, I won a bear, I won two bare knuckle world championships, ranked number 10 in the world for that. Dang. That is amazing. So what have you learned throughout the process of how you grew up, you know, being a troubled child and teenager, so all this path, you know, from when you got out of jail at 16 to where you are now, what have been some of those life lessons? I mean, it's obvious, like, what what some of your say yes experiences have been along the road, but what are some of those lessons that you've learned that have really maybe helped you or that's changed the course of where you're headed? You know, just uh, the believing in yourself. I mean, if you believe in yourself and you, you know, I mean, it just it takes a little bit of belief and discipline and hard work and it doesn't matter who you are, where you're from. I mean, you mm-hmm. can make it happen. You know, I've seen, I've seen so many people. I, I just in the boxing, I've seen so many people that, you know, I had it worse than I did. You know, I, I mean, I had it all, you know, mentally stuff like, you know, it's bad, but I, I mean, I never had to like, I always had food and stuff. I see people, you know, that didn't have food and, you know, now that are fine, you know, making millions of dollars fine on TV. So, I mean, it's just, it just, it doesn't matter where you come from. It just, you got to put in the work and believe in yourself more than anybody else. And, you know, and you know, people, you, you, you know, yeah, people, you know, nobody's going to, you know, cause even when I, I was boxing, I was, I was like winning nationals. I still like my mom and ever still, just, they didn't, they didn't give me any credit. Like they just like, Oh, it's just a dream. It's, I still, she's still that way. And, uh, so it's just, you know, you, you can't let the people around you get you down because uh, it doesn't, doesn't matter. If you put the work in, you can achieve it. So Yeah, and, you know, Tyler, that's such a good point. There's always going to be people around that are going to say stuff that are, that are going to be negative, and we can bo- choose to believe them or believe ourselves. One of the things that I reiterate to myself whenever I do that is, you know, if everyone in the room is saying, no, you can't do it. No, you won't be successful. No, it won't work. If you believe in yourself, you'll be standing at the front saying yes, 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 because it all comes down to your belief in yourself. And at the end of the day, you had somebody, your coach, who was filling you with motivation, inspiration, and really encouraging and supporting you. Yet at the end of the day, you still had to believe in yourself, even if it's just a little tiny bit. You believed in yourself, and then when something great happened, that belief grew, and then something something else happened, that belief grew. And, you know, not everything works out perfectly, right? So what happens is you go and try for the Olympics, and you don't get the Olympics. Okay, so it doesn't work out perfectly, but then what do you do? You say, oh, okay, so maybe I'm not going to be in the Olympics, so I'll go pouch. And then you go down on that road, right? So even in the things that don't work out perfectly, how can you tweak and adjust to will create that level of greatness out of it. But we'll always, always encounter those negative Nancys and toxic tens. We just can't allow them to impact our our mindset and our mental health and absolutely not the belief that we have in ourselves. And then you just got, you got to learn how to lose because, you know, coming, you know, the the comeback story is always a lot better. You know what I mean? If I would have, if everything would have went right for me the second I got out, I mean, it wouldn't be as good as it was, you know, to fight on TV and, and all that, you know, cause you know, I had, you know, I had teachers in school tell me, they're like, Oh, you're never going to do, do anything in boxing. And I, I still remember one teacher, I won't say, say their name, but I, I remember after I fought on TV, I found them on Facebook and I sent him a picture of my check. And I said, I make my, I made more than you did all year. I said, so. No. Well, and I, you know, and I do not like it when teachers say that to kids because, you know, as you proved, kids remember that. And then kids start to believe that. And that doesn't have anything to do with the kid. That has to do with the teacher, 
right? Where the teacher comes from or the teachers believe in themselves or any of that, but yet they're putting that on children. And then children start buying into that as though that's their truth. And then they start owning it. And then they start like believing that. And that becomes their story as they're growing up, which becomes a lot harder for them to turn around. But I love what you're saying, Tyler, that you have to learn how to lose. That is so powerful, right? I mean, you've heard people say, well, you fail and you get back up, or if you fall, you know, you get back up, but you got to learn how to lose. And then what do you do with that loss? Right? Because I like that. The comeback story was so much sweeter. And it worked for the comeback person, right? The person coming back. So that's awesome. I love that. And so there's going to be people out there that are going to say, well, great. I'm never going to box. So how did this pertain to me? Never going to box. I don't want to be a professional boxer. So what would you share with them that they're not in that realm or any kind of athletics? Like Because there's so much of what you've gone through and how you've created success in your life in various different aspects because now you own a gym, right? So you actually have taken that even to the next level. So how does this pertain to them? What can they take away from this for their own lives? You know, it doesn't have to be working out. It doesn't have to be the gym. It doesn't have to be a sport. I mean, it could be speech and debate. It could be whatever you want it to be. You just have to put the time in, you know? I don't know, you've heard about the 10,000 hour rule. You got to put 10,000 hours in. I mean, it just doesn't matter what it is. Like you don't have to, it doesn't have to be that, like a sport. It it could be anything. It really can be anything and whatever you want to do. It just, it just put in the time and work in and, uh, you know, believing in yourself. Yeah. So. And believe in yourself. Yes. And to stop telling yourself those stories that maybe other people Tell us ever since we were young and start creating those news stories. So what do you want to do these days? Tell us a little bit more that you started a gym. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, uh, been, I was with my coach for the whole time and, uh, he had passed away a little over a year ago. I took over the gym for him and, uh, basically, yeah, I run a gym. I, I own a insurance, my insurance agency, um, still, uh, I'm, I'm getting, I'm 31. I still have a couple years left to fight. We'll so, I mean, I don't need to fight. Great success story. Great success story. I mean, so I proclaim trouble teen to major success, like a boxer, business owner. And the cool thing about you owning a gym is that now you can really impact all those people that come in and share your story, especially any kids that may resemble you in some aspect you can go and impart some words of wisdom on them to impact their lives and kind of be the coach for them that your coach was for you so thank you so much for being here i love hearing about your story and all the ways that you're impacting and changing what you did in life or what you were at the young age and really inspiring other people so thank you so much for tuning in today and I'm going for you to take some of Tyler words and input and input them into your life about learning how to lose. I love that. You have to learn how to lose. Then what are you going to do whenever you actually do lose? How are you going to take that loss and move forward in new and different ways? We'll see you in the next one. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye. Are you ready to move to your next level of rock star greatness? CFO, Chief Fund Officer, number one best-selling author, and keynote speaker, Blaze Rector, is ready to help you do that. At just 10 years old, he's already written two number one best-selling books. Through the power of storytelling, he uses lessons learned and shares strategies, tips, tactics, and tools to inspire, empower, and motivate you to live a more amazing life. So if you're ready to do that in your own life, grab a copy of his number one best-selling books at justcorrector.com forward slash store. And when you order your copies, he will personally autograph them and write you a message on those books before shipping them out to you to really inspire and empower you in your life. These books are great for adults, 
and kids alike. So if you're ready to move to your next level of rock star greatness, make sure you grab your copy at justcorrector.com forward slash store. Enjoy those amazing, empowering, transformational books. Did you know that the two biggest issues impacting the workforce are mental health and burnout? Well, we have your solution. The more that you feel burned out, the more it impacts your mental health. The more your mental health is impacted, the more it leads to burnout. So it's a vicious cycle that goes around and around, but it doesn't have to be that way. You can help them both if you're intentional and strategic with it. We have lots of resources for you at justcorrector.com forward slash store. One that I want to highlight that really enhances your mental health is Tame Your Brain Game, 52 Tips to Turn Negative Thoughts into Positive Action. Now, research shows that 80% of your thoughts are negative. No matter how positive you feel, it's the pattern and the habit that you've developed over the course of years, over the course of decades. And that can often impact your life, how you show up, how you lead, how you communicate, how you engage, whether at work or at home. And then it also impacts a work environment. All you need is one NN or TT, negative Nancy or toxic Tim, to really impact that work environment. So if you are ready to enhance your mental health, get your copy of Tame Your Brain Game, 52 Tips to Turn Negative Thoughts into Positive Action today at justcorrector.com forward slash store. All books are autographed with a personal message just for you. Thank you so much for being here. Check us out at thesayyesexperience.com. Our mission at the Say Yes Experience is to empower 10 million people to say yes. With your help in sharing our podcast, we can do that. Follow us on all social media at the Say Yes Experience and join our free community at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash the Say Yes Experience. Thank you again to our guests. You can find all the contact information for our guests in the show notes. Thank you to our CFO, Chief Fund Officer, Blaze Rector, our business advisor, Lisa Rehurek, and to our team at Jessica Rector Enterprises. We look forward to connecting with you on the next episode. Have an amazing day and keep being a rock star. Oh, 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 oh